شب تاب شب دوبا Hello guys, today we're going to go over 0.5 Systems of linear equations and inequalities We saw this last year, just a small review Now example 1 shows us to solve by graphing All you have to do is you know, whatever equations they give you, just isolate your y value, plug them into the calculator, and look at the graph. Or, if you're given the graph, just look at the graph. Wherever the lines cross the ordered pair x and y, that is the solution to that system. If you're given linear equations, you can have one solution or no solutions if the lines are parallel since they never cross. If they give you other types of equations like quadratics or cubics, note that you can have more than one. We'll see this year you can be given a linear and a quadratic, two solutions where the lines cross. So again, if they give you the equations, just graph them in your calculator and see where they cross. If they give you the cross, just see where they cross. Look for the ordered pair, x and y values. That is the solution to that system. Now, in example two, it says solve by substitution. Um, as we saw last year, substitution isn't that fast and I'd rather do elimination just it's way faster and besides this year when we go over matrices you will learn how to use matrices to solve linear equation systems even faster than elimination it's practically the same only faster um, but let's go ahead and do substitution so you know what exists and again i recommend you never do substitution unless you're given incredibly small simple equations or systems just don't substitute do elimination it's always going to be faster um, but let's say for example if they give me in example two, let's do it by substitution. 5x minus y equals 14. Now note one thing. I'm told to do this by substitution. You can choose the top one to isolate your y or the bottom one to isolate your y. Now, normally, I would recommend we do the bottom one. It's just way simpler to isolate. There is no number multiplying the y, so you can just move everything else to the other side. Oh, there is a negative one, but we'll talk about that now. You can send everything else to the other side, and you're done. That doesn't mean you can't take the top one, but the top one's going to give you a real funky fraction, so just forget about the top one. So here, when I isolate, I just do minus 5x, and you're left with negative y equals minus 5x plus 14. Now note, you want to end up with a positive y, so all you do is, since this is an equality, you multiply this side by negative 1 and this side by negative 1. When you multiply, you end up with positive 5x minus 14. So again, y is 5x minus 14 after you multiply both sides by negative 1. Now here's where the substitution happens. Because right now, all we did was isolate my y down here. And you end up with y equals 5x minus 14. Now, I ask you guys, is this letter not y? Yeah, that's y. Is this letter also not y? Yeah. So that y is equal to this y. And this y is equal to this. So all you do is open a parenthesis and plug this in here. 5x minus 14. And then you put your equals 9 there again. And what are we going to do now? We're going to solve this system for just x. Because it used to be y, but now I only have x. And that's the whole point. Go down to one variable. Now here I have 2x. Now I'm going to distribute the 3. This becomes plus 15x minus 30 minus 42 equals 9. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to add everything. So I have 17x equals... I'm going to send the 42 this way, 51. Again, you add. What do I do now? Divide by, uh, divide by 17. Sorry. So I can isolate my x. Divide this by 17. And you're left with x equals 3. Now note, many students stop there and say, oh my God, the solution is x. No, remember, the solution is an ordered pair. Right now, you only have the x portion of the ordered pair. How do you find your y? Simple. You go back to your original equations. Let's see. 2x plus 
3y equals 9, and down here I have 5x minus y equals 14. You can pick any of these two equations and substitute the x for the x value here, and then solve for your y. That's going to give you your x and your y. You can choose any. I'm going to choose the top one because my y is positive. It's just simpler that way. So I'm going to substitute this x for 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. So you have 6 plus 3y equals 9. I isolate my y, minus 6, minus 6, 3y equals 3. Divide by 3, divide by 3. You're left with the answer, y equals 1. I'm sorry, y equals 1. And that is the solution to the system. Now, why is this ordered pair important? And to have you guys understand how a system works, the system pretty much says, that in these two equations, if for your x values you put 3 and for your y values you put 1, they will both give you the top one 9 and the bottom one 14. So they will both be consistent answers. We're going to go over that a little bit later. So that's the whole point of a system. You can't just work one by itself, solve it, and then the other one. The whole point of a system is the same x value applies to that system, the same y value. And you'll see later on the same z values and however many variables you have they do not change so that would be the solution to this system via substitution again you can see it was very long you have to isolate substitute plug in solve come back do not like elimination that's the way to do this but again you know you have the freedom to choose however you want to do them in my test i just strongly advise against substitution. Now let's go over example three. And I'm told 1.5x plus 2y equals 20. And down here I have 2.5x minus 5y equals negative 25. Now note one thing. In a system of equations, you can multiply any line by a single number and it's not gonna change the system. I can multiply the top one by two. I can multiply the bottom one by negative one half. If you multiply the entire line by the same number, you won't have a problem. Now here, I'm giving decimals. Oh my God, decimals, don't freak out. You can just get rid of them very easily. To begin, since I don't like decimals, I can just multiply them both by two. That's one way to do it. I multiply this top one by two and this bottom one by two. Top one's gonna turn into three X plus four Y equals 40. The bottom one will turn into five X minus 10 Y equals negative 50. Easier numbers to work with. Now here's the next part. And this one is actually longer than normal because you just can't add lines to cancel a variable. Remember we saw this last year? One second, please. That was a cat emergency. Did not want my cat meowing the entire video, so I did have to open up. And again, going over these numbers, you can add one line to the other to just try to cancel out a variable, and that's what you should try to do. Add two lines to try to cancel one variable out. You can cancel out the X, you can cancel out the Y, it doesn't matter. Now here, if I add these two, it would not cancel my X, it would not cancel my Y, and you know, you don't focus on the numbers, just focus on the variables. So how can we easily cancel out a particular variable? Multiply, for example, you can multiply this number times this number with its sign change. That's going to guarantee, and, and you multiply this number by this number, it's going to guarantee you end up with two equal numbers with different signs. For example, I'm going to multiply the top number by negative 5, which is this number with its sign changed. I'm going to multiply the bottom number or the bottom equation by this number. Let's see what happens now. Negative 3 or negative 5 times 3x, negative 15x, negative 20y, 
negative 200. When I multiply the top line by negative 5, I end up with these numbers. These numbers. Note, this method or this particular example is longer than normal because I was given decimals. And, you know, they're kind of a pain to work with, so I just got rid of those decimals. Now I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by the number 3. 3 times 5 is 50 next. Note, I have the exact same number, only of opposite signs. That's what you want. 3 times negative 10 is negative 30y. And 3 times negative 50 is negative 150. Let me confirm. Absolutely correct. Now, note what's going to happen. Here, the, when now, again, when you can cancel out a variable, all you have to do is add one line with another to cancel them out. Negative 15x plus 15x will give me 0x, or nothing at all. Negative 20 minus 30y will give you negative 50y. And here, when I add these two, I get negative 350y. Note, I am left with a one variable system. Negative 50y equals negative 350. All you do now, isolate for y. Divide by negative 50, divide by negative 50. This gives you positive 7. So now you know that your y is equal to positive 7. All you have to do now is plug that y into any of these systems and you're pretty much isolate your x and you're done. Let's plug it into the original 3x plus 4y equals 40. Again, this is the equation where I doubled everything to get rid of the decimal and I know my y equals 7. I'm going to change my y for 7 here. 4 times 7 is 28. And 20, 4, so 28. When I, when I isolate, I get 3x equals 40 minus 28 is 12. Divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 4. And there is your system. Again, normally, if you pay attention, the book will give you exercises that all you have to do is just add an x or add a y, and it's going to cancel out a variable. Or just multiply by a very simple number. Not that difficult. That's pretty much it. Now let's go over example four. Example four is elimination, only now we're working with three variables. And this is a little trickier. So let's continue, let's go ahead and do this. X minus two Y plus Z equals 15. Two X plus three Y minus z equals 7, and the last one, 4x plus 10y minus 5z equals negative 3. Now, what you want to do here is you have a three-variable system. You're going to have to actually use different lines to end up with two two variable systems. Let's go ahead and find the first two variable system. If I add, let's go ahead and give them numbers. This is equation number one, this is equation number two, this is equation number three. If I add one and two, I'm already removing the z, because again, these two z's cancel out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one, line one plus line two, x plus two x, is 3x. Negative 2y plus 3y is just y. The z cancels out and 15 plus 7 equals 22. So you can see when I added line 1 and line 2, the z variable canceled out. Great. Now I use this number and this number, or this line and this line. I need to find two other lines to find my second two variable system. What I'm going to do here is, since this z is positive and this z is negative, I'm going to multiply the top line times 5, then I'm going to add it down here to cancel out this z. So let's see. 
when I multiply the first line by 5, I have, I'm left with 5x minus 10y plus 5z equals 75. That is line 1 times 5. Now you can see, if I were to add the line 1 times 5, which is this, plus line 3, I add 5x and 4x, I, I get 9x, 10y minus 10y cancels out, 5z minus 5z cancels out, and that is equal to 75. Do, 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 do. Let me confirm. Yeah, again, in the book, they're just adding different lines, but that's pretty much it. Um, let's see. Let me see. 75. Oh, okay. I for No wonder. It wasn't adding up properly, but I forgot to add the 75 and the negative 3. It becomes 72. Now it's going to make perfect sense. Now note, I have a single variable system. When you have a single variable system, just isolate for that variable. Divide by 9, divide by 9, this becomes y equals 8. So I have that one variable right there. Now this is a two variable system. I can substitute the y equals 8 value in here. 8. And when you isolate this, you get 22 minus 8 going to give you 14 and you have 3x equals 14 you divide that's going to give you your x value and then you plug that in to find your last z value into any three variable system let's see oh and this was actually x not y x Let's go ahead and fix that right now. I apologize. Now it's going to make a lot more sense because normally, normally, you're going to end up with whole numbers. Not always, but normally. Let's repeat. Let's repeat that. Sorry about that. Again, I thought this was a Y. This was actually an X. The Y canceled out. The Z canceled out. And X gives you 8. So now I put my x equals 8 here and that's going to be 24 plus y equals 22. I isolate this minus 24 and I'm told y equals negative 2. So now I have an x value and a y value. All you have to do is plug those in here to find your z value. x is 8, y is negative 2, you're going to multiply and isolate. This gives you 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. You isolate it. 15 minus 12 is 3. Z equals 3. And you can see those are the answers in the book. X, Y, and Z. Now note one thing important. When I added, when I multiplied this by 5 and I added it here, I was lucky that two variables canceled out. And I was left with one variable. That, that I then plugged in here to find the second variable, and I use those two variables to find the third value. What normally will happen is that only one variable will cancel out. Say, for example, you're left with 6x minus 2y equals 18. Normally, what's going to happen is this. You're going to, be, you're going to end up with two, two variable systems. And what do you do there? You try to cancel out one of those variables, by multiplying and then adding those two lines. Again, we saw that last year, I hope you remember. To end up with one variable, then you plug that one variable into any of these two systems to end up with your second variable, and then you work backwards to find your last variable. Now, to finish off, all we gotta remember is the one solution, no solution, infinite solutions. Whenever you're solving, sometimes you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. All the variables cancel out and you're left with zero equals a particular number. At other times when you add two lines, you're going to end up with zero equals zero. Other times you're going to end up with a variable equals a value 
and then using that value, you can find your other variables. When you have this situation, it's gonna be one solution. That is the only solution. That is a consistent system. Whenever you have a two, 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 two. Well, one solution. That is the one solution to that system. When you have an inequality, you're gonna have no solutions. That system does not have a solution. And when you're left with an equality, zero equals zero, that means infinite solutions. We're gonna go into independent, dependent, and consistent versus inconsistent later on this year. So that's pretty much it for today. I will see you tomorrow. Take care.